The first thing you need to do to use Collaborate or Illuminate's plan is to make sure all your PowerPoint and other materials are converted into the right format. For PowerPoint slides, this is a .wbd format. You can convert in the plan platform, and I will show you that when we get there. However, I have had mixed luck with that, and so my habit is just to open a Collaborate classroom that is empty and to use the file key to open whiteboard files. I will browse to the PowerPoint I want to convert to whiteboard file and simply load it into the empty Collaborate Classroom. Once my PowerPoint slides have finished loading into my classroom, I simply need to go up to the file menu again and save this as a whiteboard file. I'll be prompted to save all the pages or just the current one. I do want to save everything. I'll just click OK and I will rename it. Now that my PowerPoint has been converted into a WB file, I am ready to go into plan and start building my session plan. Alright, now that my files are ready for plan, I'm going to go into my start menu and launch Illuminate plan. You do need to install this ahead of time. This is the plan interface. The white and blue area at the top of the screen is where you can load content. Sometimes this loads as a very small skinny area and you can simply click and drag to expand it so you can see more room. The white area below is where you'll organize your content into the order that you wish to present it in during your session. This is also where you can add actions. You can use the buttons across the top to load your content and actions. You can also use these buttons to add topics to make your session look more like an outline to keep yourself organized. I tend not to use this feature, but it's a great organizational feature that is included in session plan if you would like to use it. I'm going to use this plus folder icon to add new content. And I am browsing for that PowerPoint that I did convert into whiteboard slides so that I don't have to worry. Now if I were selecting a PowerPoint right now, it would ask me if I wanted to convert it and I could go ahead and do that. It does seem to conflict though if I'm loading any other whiteboard slides in here, the converting and having other whiteboards in the same plan at the same time doesn't seem to work. So again, I like to convert my PowerPoints ahead of time, but you can try whatever strategy seems to work best for you. I'm going to add in some other content. I have some other whiteboard slides that I've used. This is the main PowerPoint I want to use for this project, so if I just click here and drag down into the blank white area below, it's going to take all of those separate whiteboard files and using the titles of each of the slides, it's going to build them in here. So I can start to build my plan. I'm going to pause the video and add in several more files, including some multimedia, and then I'll show you how we organize these. Okay, so I've I've almost finished uploading all of my content. I have a few different whiteboard slides. I have a quiz that I want to deploy. I have a Word document that I want to deliver to participants electronically. I have a movie and another whiteboard file. I do want to add one more PowerPoint file just to show you what you're prompted to do. So if I wanted to send this PowerPoint to my users through the session, I get this message. If the file plan PowerPoint is for loading into the whiteboard, it must be converted first. Do I want to do this? Now, I don't want to convert it right now. One, because I have too many whiteboard files in here and I think I'm going to have some issues. But also, I want to keep this as a PowerPoint to send, electronity, to send electronically with the file transfer feature in Collaborate. So I'm going to click No and you can see it maintains it as a PowerPoint. Now, these are some of the items in my session and I'm going to go ahead and just drag and drop things down to put them in my session. So this mood slide is something that I often use to greet participants with, so I'm going to stick it at the very beginning. From within here, I can move items up and down simply by dragging and dropping. So let me go ahead and put in the next one, which is this candy quiz, and I want to talk about that after I talk about the feature of, Col of Collaborate, which is the quiz feature. Now this is a quiz that I built ahead of time in Collaborate. You'll see that when I placed this quiz in the course, the start and stop actions came in with it. So Collaborate plan just really kind of knows that I'm going to need to start and stop that quiz at some point. And I'll show you a little bit more about actions in just a moment. Another thing I want to do is put in my movie. 
I've had the best luck with movies in the Shockwave Flash format, but Collaborate will support many different varieties of video formats, including MP4, WMV, and the only glitch with some of those is those ones that require a user's computer to launch media player. Occasionally their firewalls will block that, or they don't have a media player that's compatible with the version. So I just always have the best luck with Shockwave Flash files. And I use a program called Format Factory to convert any video into that format. And I want to go ahead and put that after the video slide. You'll see again the actions came in with it to play the multimedia and to stop the multimedia. So these actions are already starting to come in, but there are many other actions I might want to add to this session. So I'm going to open the actions window. And over here I see many, many of the great actions that will help make my session a little more automatic so I don't have to think about them. For instance, the recorder, and I'm going to use this plus to expand out the different options. Many times I forget to start the recording. Now this little public page, the mood slide I have at the beginning, is not where I want to actually start my recording. I would like to start it right when I get to this slide, right before it. So I will drag in the action, start recording right here. There, that's the spot I want it. I can also, within the session, pause the recording. Say if we're going to do a breakout room activity and I don't want that to be part of the recording, I could build that into the recording also. You don't see a stop recording because that automatically happens either when you exit the session or when you click the stop button. I'm now going to maximize the application sharing options and note that I do want to share an application right down here when I talk about application sharing. I want to build in an action to do that. Now this item becomes highlighted in sort of a pink shade and it's telling me that I need to assign some kind of value for that. And so all I need to do up here is just basically tell myself what application I want to share. So I could type the name of the website. For this one it's the Fun Brain website. And I don't actually type in the website's address. I just need to make sure I have that website open on my computer when I go to do that. As soon as I assign kind of the specifics for this action, it doesn't load as pink anymore. Let me show you another example of that where I want to go to the file transfer menu. So I have a document up in the session items up here on accessing our online classroom and I want to give this to my users as a resource. So I want to, I don't want them to have that at the very beginning though. I think I'm going to do that down here under best practices. So I'm going to load this file for transfer. And again, now it turned pink. It wants to know which file I want for transfer. So over here, I'm going to use this search button. And I get a dialog box that has access to all the files that I've already loaded. So I'm just going to choose the one that I have. And so at this point in the presentation, that document's going to load and it's going to prompt users to save it. You can also put in the prompt to save file, but it seems to be that whenever I do both, it asks them to save the file to their computer twice. Okay, another great thing you can build into your sessions are breakout rooms. Now, a lot of times it's difficult to manage this while you're in the midst of a session, so you can build it in ahead of time. So let's say under my screen where I get to possible uses, I want to put people into breakout rooms. So I'm going to just go into create rooms and I'm going to put it right down under here. Now when I create a room again it shows up in pink because it wants to know the name of the room so maybe I'm going to make a room for elementary teachers under staff. And again once I assign a room name it goes back to white which is good. Maybe I'm going to make another room and we'll call this one middle school high school. All right, at this point, I could also distribute participants. Now, if I'm setting up specific rooms, I'm probably going to want to allow them to right click on their names and send themselves to the appropriate room. So I'm not going to do that. But at the end of our discussion, it probably would make sense for me to return everyone to the main room after we do some breakout room time. So I'm going to build in that action here. Another way to build in rooms, again, here is some best practices. So maybe I want to, instead of sending people to rooms based on their level, just randomly distribute them. So this is a fun action. I can just go into build in this one, distribute participants, and it wants to know over here on the right how many rooms I want. So you kind of just take a rough guess as to how many participants you think you'll need or how many participants you think you'll have and how many rooms based on that. You could always delete one at the last minute. And again, after you distribute participants, it's probably best after you give them some breakout room time to build in the action to 
return them all to the main room. And I'll show you how all these actions work in Illuminate, but it'll be great because when you go through your session plan, you just click the play button and instead of you manually distributing participants or having to find that was in the tool menu, it's just going to happen automatically. Okay, I think I've built in most of the actions I want in here. You can explore some of these other options and see if anything works for you. Oh, polling is one that we didn't talk about. Polling is different than quizzes. Polling are just questions you put on your PowerPoint slides and then have users um, answer. But you can set the poll type. So I could drag this over here. This polling question that I have on polling was a A, B, or C choice. So over here on poll type, instead of having yes, no, I can make it A, B, C. And then I can also publish those poll statistics to the whiteboard. And again, none, none of this will happen until I tell it to happen in my plan, but at least it's all happening automatically. That one's in the wrong order, so I'll just drag it up here. All right, everything's looking good. Timer is handy too, so sometimes for breakout rooms I will do a timer. So before this breakout room I will build in a timer and you can set how much time you would like to have built into that and what kind of notification will happen when the timer runs out, even a, either a message or a beep or both. And you can also stop the timer. You can build in video, web tours, all of these things. Compound actions would be having more than one thing happen at once. These are just things to kind of play around with as you go through. The only thing that I want to definitely point out is, is under the, under this whiteboard menu, there are some very handy items here. So you might have a screen that you want to copy to a breakout room so that everyone can see that screen. I also like to, if I'm having users in my breakout rooms, draft some items on the whiteboard. Sometimes I will, before we return everyone or right after we return everyone to the main room, I will build in the action to copy all of the screens, all the answers that they put together in there breakout rooms, I'll have that copied to the main room. So that is under whiteboard. To me, it seems like it should be under breakout rooms, but this is where you will find it. So there's many different actions that you can build in here. So you just need to really explore and try out many of these different things that you can build into your sessions. Once you're happy with your session, you can save it. You can always come back and make changes. So I'm just going to save this session plan. And it's saving as an ELPX file. Now the only person who can edit this would be someone with this plan software, but you can send an ELPX file to just anyone who has a Collaborate Classroom and they can open it. So you can build a plan and others can run that plan. It's going to be a pretty large file because I've got multimedia, PowerPoint, Word, lots of different things built into this file. I'm going to go ahead and put it on my desktop for now and I'm going to click Save. I've now exited the plan software and you can see I now have my ELPX file right here on the desktop. This file I can open with Illuminate or Collaborate Plan and do further editing or I can send it to someone else who does not have plan software and they can simply open the file for use in a Collaborate or Illuminate session. So I'm going to go ahead and open my Collaborate Classroom and so show you how you will load a plan file. You go to the file menu, open, session plan. Browse to your file, and you will get a dialog window that shows you the status of your plan as it is uploading. Okay, so my session plan has finished loading, and this is a screen that I will see as the moderator that my participants won't see. And these are all of the content and actions that I have built into my session plan. Now it does take up quite a bit of room, so um, you can drag the window down to other areas of the screen. Or you can use this tool over here to collapse it to be a smaller toolbar so that it's just a little um, basically advance and go back button that you have here. So as I go through my session, instead of needing to use the tools at the top of the whiteboard to advance through my slides, I can simply use my plan, my session plan. So as I advance through these, and this is where it's a great idea to have two computers set up so you can see what happens on maybe a session participant's computer you can see what happens to the whiteboard as you go through. So in our session plan, which I've again enlarged, this arrow tells me where I'm at. I can manually go ahead and skip around different areas of the plan. I don't have to go in order. But if I do use these advanced buttons, the session plan will go in order. Recording started. So as I went to this next feature, this next action, the recording started by itself. And I can use this session plan to advance through my entire session. 
Now I can always override the plan. If at this point I wanted to put in another polling question, I can just move the plan over to the side. I could add in a different polling question. I could go to tools. I go to polling. I could change the poll type, publish those results to the whiteboard. Um, I can always override the session plan. I can stop the session plan too, just by using this close session plan button. But you really don't need to because you can always override it. So if I felt like I needed to application share something right now, I could go ahead and do that. And then I can go back to my plan. Again, you can see um, as I went back to publishing those results to the whiteboard, that happened in the session automatically. So all of those actions that I have built in are happening automatically. I was just advancing to the action to give the quiz, but there's no one in the room to give the quiz to, so I got this message. And this is how you can use your session plan to really make it easier to advance through your sessions. All I need to do for this pretty complicated session that has quizzes, application sharing, multimedia, is simply to use the advance and go back buttons. And again, if any time I felt like I needed to go someplace else in the plan or skip ahead, I can just click with my mouse and skip around in this plan. The arrow here always lets me know where I'm at. So that is how you can use session plan to really enable your sessions to progress more smoothly. And it's also a great tool for creating a pretty complicated session that you could send to someone who has perhaps more limited at collaborate experience. And all they'll need to do is know how to open the plan and advance through it with these buttons right here.